The Earth's been around for some time, about 4.5 billion years actually. Quite a few. And I wonder, is today really the best time to live? What if we lived when the dinosaurs did? Or earlier? Or earlier? Or earlier? Let's take a look at all the eons, eras and periods that Earth has been around for. Throw them all on this list and begin ranking geological time periods to live in. Starting 4.5 billion years ago with... The Hadean Eon, appropriately named after the Greek god of hell, was, in fact, hell. Thanks to asteroids bombarding the planet, a thick atmosphere trapping heat, as well as volcanic eruptions, constant radiation, and lava as floor, the atmosphere was a nice sunny temperature of 230 degrees Celsius, enough heat to cook or turn you into a prosciutto pizza. Additionally, there was no oxygen in the atmosphere, so have fun breathing. While there are believed to have been oceans underneath the Earth's surface during the Hadean, most scientists argue that life did not exist yet, rendering surviving during this period completely impossible for humans. Oh, and the moon formed. That softens the blow. Fast forward 500-ish million years and the Earth is very different. Welcome to the Eoarchaean era. The asteroid bombardment has stopped sodomizing the planet. And the Earth is cooling, so the water vapor in the atmosphere is falling as rain and forming surface-level oceans. While it's still hot enough to slow cook us humans, early life forms like heat-resistant bacteria might be starting to slowly spread around the planet. But the enormous pressure, toxic gases and lack of oxygen are still preventing life from thriving. I live in England though, so the rain would be easy for me. 400 million years later, we have entered the Paleoarchaean era. The rain has stopped, and the earth is flooded, and we finally have, quite literally, rock-solid evidence of life on earth. Stromatolites, sedimentary rocks created by our first forms of life. Interestingly, the early sun is getting brighter. While it was about 30% dimmer during the Hadean compared to today, it is now bright enough to support photosynthesis, which is a huge step in evolution. However, this brightness has also slowed Earth's cooling, and the atmosphere is still too anoxic, meaning the Earth still can't support human life. So have fun paddling around. Not much has changed 400 million years later. In the Mesoarchaean era, tectonics are starting to push and pull at the Earth's crust, releasing some more funky gases into the air. At least the Earth is covered in 40 degree hot tubs and hydrothermal vents, making for a rather pleasant place to die of oxygen starvation. Another 400 million years later, the Neoarchaean is not too kind to us either. However, life is starting to diversify and rapidly spread around the planet. All this photosynthesis taking place is working away at our greenhouse gas filled atmosphere atmosphere, leading up to the Siderium, 2.5 billion years ago, where a massive event is beginning, the Great Oxidation Event. Oxygen is rapidly being emitted by photosynthesis, not only making the air finally breathable, but also reacting with methane and cooling the planet down to a spicy 40 degrees Celsius worldwide before quickly cooling it to over negative 50 degrees, at which point the globe freezes over and snow coverage reflects almost all sunlight, keeping it cool for 200 million years. Yeah, they had us the first half, I'm not gonna lie. Life will have to cling on in small air pockets and hydrothermal vents to survive the ice ages. But no worries, they'll be able to feed off your frozen carcass. Now the riation begins. Volcanoes slowly heat the earth and melt all the ice and snow, and we return to our uncomfortably hot climate. Oxidation is still on the up, and multi cellular organisms are starting to evolve. But despite this, oxygen levels are still at a measly 1% in the atmosphere, compared to the 21% we are used to. So the Earth is still very much uninhabitable for humans. About 250 million years later, during the Orocerion, the Earth's landscape is carved up. Two enormous asteroid collisions rattle Earth, one of which creates the largest impact structure on the planet. Definitely not a good time to take a walk through South Africa or Canada. Welcome to the Stetherian. Another 250 million years have passed, and the first supercontinent has formed, Colombia. Across this new landscape, a potent plant evolves and flourishes. Its leaves are harvested by microbacteria and fall to the ground, and across millions of years, it is exposed to a number of chemicals, cooling water vapor from the atmosphere and nitric acid underground mix with the leaves. Lime and gasoline also congest with the mixture, and from the heat underground, a chemical reaction takes place, turning the leaves into a white-colored paste. These materials are smuggled by mules to different clients across the earth. Transportation evolved to become very creative. The coca would often be transported across the US-Mexican border by narco-submarines. Oh, 
Colombia with a U. 200 million years later during the Colimian, eukaryotic life is starting to flourish, an important step towards further evolution. However, life still only exists underwater, and above water there still isn't enough oxygen for humans. Ectasian error. Nothing changes, still not enough air. Steenian error. A type of algae invents sex. Cheers, guys. But nothing changes. Tonian error. One billion years ago. Nothing changes. 280 million years later, during the cryogenian, the Earth freezes over again. Carbon dioxide levels are so low from photosynthesis that the Earth's atmosphere struggles to retain heat, and the growing polar ice caps once again reflect any hope of warmth. We also don't really know how life survived the cryogenian, so... Yeah, this one's rough. About a hundred million years later during the Ediacaran era, the planet unfreezes and Earth is finally resemblant of today. There are now many more large, soft-bodied organisms around the planet. Oxygen levels are the highest so far, and we can kind of breathe. Sadly, we can't eat anything just yet, because all life is still underwater, and relatively sparse. But this is the brightest things have seemed for us in Earth's history so far, and life is not slowing down anytime soon. 539 million years Years ago, the Cambrian explosion begins. In the process, an extinction occurs, almost wiping out all aquatic life. But on the other hand, animal species skyrocket. There's more oxygen than ever before, and after almost 4 billion years of Earth's history, life finally begins to colonize land. We, we think, we don't really know. It's still far from habitable for us, but at least we have some wet algae to appetize us for the next 54 million years. Now we're in the Orvidician, Ordovician, Ordovician. Biodiversity is wider than ever, and so much carbon is being munched out of the atmosphere that the whole world freezes over again and kills 85% of marine species. I hope you ration that wet algae because it's gonna have to last you 41 million years to the Silurian. Silurian period. We've now covered 90% of the time Earth has existed for, and animal life is only just checking this whole land thing out, now that there's an abundance of surface plants available as food. And darling, it's better down where it's wetter under the sea because fish have evolved to have jaws. Hell no! About 420 million years ago, during the Devonian period, life is finally getting out of the soup because we can finally breathe. Thanks to life on land now featuring trees, oxygen levels will not only reach modern day levels during the Devonian, but will even exceed them. That can't be bad for us. About 60 million years later, forests and marshlands have now covered most of the planet. However, there's nothing around to decompose them, so the matter that dies during the Carboniferous will contribute to 90% of modern day fossil fuel deposits. Oxygen now makes up over a third of the atmosphere, almost enough to be toxic to humans and cripple our nervous systems. But it's fine, because during the Permian period, a series of volcanic eruptions eradicate 90% of life, dramatically halving oxygen levels and causing the largest extinction in the history of the planet. Also making water safer than land for the first time in history. Okay, not so fine. 252 million years ago, the Triassic begins. Evolution is taking place faster than ever. Dinosaurs have evolved from fish in less than 200 million years. Only 4% of Earth's existence. Good for them. Not very bright for us though. Also, you might want to hop out of that water real quick. 51 million years later, we have entered the age of reptiles. Dinosaurs roam the land, sea, and air. Large animals finally grow wings and take to the skies. Pangaea, the last supercontinent, fractures and splits up into familiar shapes. The Earth is like a larger, right way up Australia. It's warm, humid, and humans are theoretically at the bottom of the food chain. 56 million years later, during the Cretaceous period, everything is still perfectly capable of killing us. Oxygen levels are again at over 30%, the Farallon plate is subducted, and dinosaurs will still comfortably run the world for the next 79 million years. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, remember the dinosaurs? They're gone now, along with most life on Earth. Luckily, 25% lives on, including small mammals and avian dinosaurs, which will evolve to be birds. Sure, the dinosaurs aren't here to pummel you anymore, but have fun spending the next 15 years in an impact winter with no sunlight. During the Neogene 23 million years ago, Earth is finally similar to the modern day. There are no enormous land predators, mammals and bird species thrive, oxygen levels are stable, and early hominids develop, which are terrifying, 
but preferable over dinosaurs. And finally, only 2.6 million years ago, making up 0.06% of Earth's history. Homo habilis, the first human species, appears, stone tools are invented, a bunch of ice ages take place, fire is discovered, Homo sapiens emerge, the last ice age occurs, human civilization rises, the wheel is invented, Jesus is born, the industrial revolution takes place, we visit the moon 4.5 billion years after its creation, two planes barrel into the twin, you are probably born, and I get to watch the cherry blossom at the end of my street bloom. Subscribe. And be a bit grateful the floor isn't still lava.